Now, we have a special treat for you at home. This Wednesday, unfortunately, marks the third anniversary of the assassination of Beatles, John Lennon. But despite his death, his legacy is living on thanks to fans and Vancouver's own Beatles band. And as the camera makes its way here, we'll reveal <laughs> John Lennon and Paul McCartney. No. Well, okay. Really? <laughs> Mick, <laughs> Mick Dalaby and Michael Sakali. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Say, did you do the voices too? <laughs> no. no. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Well, thanks for having us. Very it's exciting. Great. It's a nice treat. Awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you have been together. It's about 24 years. Yeah, since, too long. Too long. <laughs> yes. Since Sex Expo, yeah. on and off, yeah. basically. Yeah. And so, I guess, what? how was the band created? We have a couple of members missing, yeah. obviously, if anyone yeah. knows the Beatles. So <laughs> what, uh, yeah. <laughs> George and, and Ringo yeah. are here. Yeah. But how did, uh, how did the Revolver groups begin? How did the tribute band begin? You want to feel this one? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, well, um, Rocket Norton, our drummer, got a call back uh, when 86th Street was uh, coming together. You know, and they, they, they wanted to do some sort of a Mersey Beat, uh, British Invasion type of band. So we just basically threw the band together and decided we we're going to wear white shirts and black ties and play Mersey Beat sort of music and maybe even some Everly Brothers, things like that. And, uh, and we didn't even rehearse. We just sort of went up there and said, okay, what songs mm -hmm. do you know, what songs do you know, and, <laughs> and started playing. Well, about the third day in, the, the sound man... Uh, we walk in and he's uh, playing all this Beatles music and we've done a lot of Beatles and he's playing some Beatles music on the DJ system as we're walking we're going well that's a little bit you know dodgy I mean we're, we're going to be playing this stuff and now you're playing Beatles <laughs> yeah. music he says that's not doing? the Beatles that's you guys <laughs> yeah. I, I taped oh, you yesterday oh you're kidding and yeah, it's right. actually that's what? surprised us yeah, yeah, yeah. so we went maybe, maybe we could do this you know, it, it sounds it so sounds good. After all. Yeah. yeah, precisely. Yeah, that's what, yeah. Pardon me. Um, well, that's that is very exciting. And so that was during Expo. Mm -hmm. Expo '86. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so from there, obviously, the, the crowds, the, mm -hmm. you sort of got your fan base, and then from there, you just continued on. Yeah, it was just an amazing thing how it. Beatle music is infectious. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure you're aware of it, and I'm mm -hmm. sure everybody out there is aware of it. But, you know, we're we're basically going to go on record as saying right now that. You know, John Lennon, what he did for the generation and the generations to come. Can you imagine the world without Beatle music? Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. They're so famous. You can't. Who you know, it's know? just, yeah. So, I mean, this is going to be something that's monumental. And, I mean, CNN's going crazy with it. Mm -hmm. You know, the world over, I'm thinking this is Vancouver's chance to yeah. celebrate this man's life absolutely. and legacy. Uh, it's, it's brought smiles to our face when we play it. You imagine what it does for people out in the crowd, right, Mick? It's just yeah. so... Yeah, we got a really yeah. special show planned. It's going to be basically a, yeah. um, a, a one-off that we'll probably never do again. Mm -hmm. But it, we've really taken a lot of time in preparation for it. So I, there's, going to be, uh, there's going to be some good surprises. It's it's coming up, it's Wednesday? Wednesday night at the Vogue Theatre. I believe it's the doors exciting. are set and it's on at yeah. 8, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and so how, I guess, what can people expect? Obviously, you will be performing. Yeah. Um, will it be sort of a full show, or how will you be? Yeah, we, yeah. We sort of started around 1962, Love Me Do, right to 1970, Let It Be, and everything kind of in between. Because there's great stages of the Beatles, as we all know. You know, the Help era, the yeah. Sgt. Pepper era. They were pop culture. They were mm -hmm. yeah. the trendsetters, not Absolutely. only in music but in fashion. What they did in the 60s, they dominated. Yeah. Absolutely. So and so we do the costume changes and stuff. We're not yeah. we're not a wig bearing band. No. We don't uh, like we don't do the wigs. We do sort of dress period period yeah. pieces. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's basically just to uh, to enhance the story. We're, mm -hmm. I sort of think of us as tour guides. You know, mm -hmm. and we're going to mm -hmm. take you back into this it, yeah. into mm -hmm. this little yeah. zone and show you yeah. all the things that were happening because there's multimedia things that are mm -hmm. going on and stuff. And we're mm -hmm. not pretending to be the Beatles. We're just yeah. representing their music as as true as I think can be done. It's live, and uh, and we're not like like I said, tour guides as opposed to trying to yeah. be them. Which there's a lot of bands out there being the Beatles, and they do a good job. But you know, we yeah. want to be something a little bit different. So, mm -hmm. you, yeah. like you said you want to represent them, but yourselves yeah. as well. Exactly. And you are very accomplished musicians, Thank both you. of you. Correct. Yeah, we all sort of we, we we make our living that way. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. so. But not just. Uh, can we talk about that a little bit? Of course. Sort of, of your careers mm -hmm. uh, yourself. I, I think mm -hmm. both of you actually end up doing some voiceover work as well. He, and, and he's the voiceover master. You're the voiceover man. <laughs> <laughs> So what have, have you been working on anything recently? Not so much voiceover stuff uh, around here lately, but a lot of stuff over in the United States. I have U.S. papers, you see, and I do a lot of work down there and uh, a lot of anthem work. 
for oh, the really? Seattle Mariners. Um, we've been working with them for about 20, well, 15 years or so. Wonderful organization. Fantastic. Plug, plug. Plug, plug. Yeah. Watch, watch. Okay, and cool uh, the, <laughs> the Everett Silver Tips of the uh, WHL as well. And uh, yeah, you know, just work like that around the nation and uh, do a lot of work for the PGA of America, with the Masters in okay. Augusta and uh, that kind of thing. So. Yeah, you know, oh, we get, that's cool. I'm still impressed you learned the Russian national anthem. That was amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. I turned on TV one night and he's singing in Russian. I went, what? Uh, that is amazing. That cannot be easy. Yeah. Well, it, Flor, do we have time to tell a quick story? or should we? Uh, we have 30 seconds. We have 30 <laughs> seconds. I don't, I don't know that we'll get through it then. We'll, I'll, I'll save it for another time. Yeah. This is about the Beatles. Oh, they're saying, they're saying take it. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, really? if well, it's good, sure. no, quite plain and simply, Hockey Canada had called and said, will you do the anthem for the big uh, junior Russia-Canada game? I said, sure. Oh, Canada's no problem. He looked me in the eye and he went, <laughs> That's not the one. No, Michael, I uh-oh. Right? So I had to learn it phonetically. Wow. And when I went to center ice, it was about 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and the Russian consulate was there, and he's standing there with the big CCCP thing on. He's looking at me, <laughs> wanting me to do it. So I went through the whole thing. And I did the whole thing, you know. <laughs> and at the end of it, he looks at me, and he goes, Da, comrade. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, I guess that means affirmative, you know, so I guess it's going to be all right, you know. It's so a very surreal thing, you know, being at center ice and no one else in the crowd except this one guy in the Zamboni entrance being the adjudicator. Yeah, you're, thinking, I do it right? you're thinking the crowds that you've performed in front of, well, nothing I, in comparison to I got this. more yeah. emails and phone calls saying, not bad for an Italian doing it in Russia. Like, I don't know what the heck I was talking about. You know I mean? Multilingual, your Whatever, music you know? transcends. And, yeah. how, and how about yourself? Anything that you're working on currently, just before we... Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I'm, uh, you know, I'm also questions? involved with uh, Randy Backman and Fred Turner, the Backman and Turner Band. I'm in that, and we've just been touring all over the world. Actually, we, we, our last date was uh, ha halftime at Grey Cup last Sunday, which was fantastic. And they were great. Excellent. That's they wonderful. Great. Thank you so much, time. both of you. And we're Thank you. Stay tuned, because we will be hearing from them. And if you'd like to check out their wonderful show, Revolver, Remembering John Lennon, December 8th, at the Vogue Theatre on Granville Street. You can uh, go to their website, VogueTheatre.com, and there's a number there as well, 604-569-1144 for more information. And when we come back, a performance by the Revolvers. Stay with us. All right, here's our treat to you. Now performing If I Fell, Beatles tribute band, Revolver. If I fell in love with you, would you promise to be true and help me understand? Cause I've been in love before and I found that love was more than just holding hands. If I give to 